Hello everybody, today I'm going to, to show you how to um, convert data that comes from a laser scan sensor into an image that we can use in Simulink. And you can find a version of this tutorial at the CPS Virtual Organization in order to follow along. So let's begin now by uh, checking out in Simulink here uh, our laser scan to image model. So this uh, model is available from the Git repository of cat vehicle underscore simulink and let's review just briefly what it is that we're doing so we're subscribing to our front laser points which are on the car and those laser points come with a tremendous amount of data in lots of different buckets here um, and each one of these elements of the message gives a little bit more information to uh, to our various MATLAB boxes here in order to determine how to transform the data that's in the giant array into information that we can use as an image. So briefly what we're doing is that we're taking this range of values here, ranges, which is a large array of numbers, and we're converting these ranges into distances at various angles. And for this laser sensor that we typically use for the car, we have 180 data points that get transformed uh, into distances, 180 distances, but we attach an angle to each distance. And in this block here, uh, which takes us from this sort of rotary coordinate system into the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, here we take those angles and distances and provide as an output all of the points that we see that are within the minimum and maximum values. Um, in this region we take those points and project them into an image so that we can see what the points look like. And I'm going to now just uh, go ahead and start up one of the um, one of the neighborhoods so that we can run this and see what it looks like. So uh, what I like to run Ross launch cat vehicle cat vehicle neighborhood dot launch. Uh, this is one of my uh, most useful worlds to launch because this world file has lots of different kinds of obstacles in it um, and it allows us to check our cameras as well as checking many of the other sensors we have. So once this is started up uh, we should be able to run gazebo, GZ client, in another tab. And we should be able to see where the car is just sitting in the neighborhood and not doing much. Um, sometimes I have this problem where my gazebo decides it's just going to crash on me every once in a while. Okay, so this big giant blue thing that's shooting out in the front, this represents the laser sensor itself. And the laser sensor uh, gives value of 80 out here. So these points out here at the end are 80 meters away, and all the other intermediate points are something less than 80 meters away. So Gazebo itself allows us to see this uh, as a 3D world. What's a little bit more interesting is to source devel setup.bash and then ross run rviz rviz. And I'm using my default rviz file uh, if you don't have a default file set up, you'll have to add the, um, the laser scan to it. So the laser scan comes from slash cat vehicle slash front laser points. And now we can see uh, each of these points here. And each of these points corresponds to a number, uh, which is how many meters away it is from this red box in the front. So you can see we have a bunch of values here that are not 80 meters away. There's something less than 80 meters. Uh, we don't see any 80 meter returns in uh, our viz because we're just throwing away those points when we visualize them. So our viz is taking care right now of projecting these points into the into the Cartesian plane so that we can see them. We need to do this in Simulink so that we can take advantage of many of the other kinds of features that Simulink has. So for example, this point here, uh, we might be able to actually see what some of these points are in a new tab. Ross topic echo dash n one cat vehicle front laser points. So the dash n one says I only want to see one of them. And now we can see uh, several of these values uh, in the various different buckets that we'll see in a few minutes. Um, these are the intensities, which we're not really using. All these intensity values are probably going to be zero. Um, but in this range, we can see all of the different ranges that are returned. And so these ranges are, say, 24.2 meters away, 24.27, 24.32, 24.38. These distances are corresponding 
probably to these points here. And I know that because uh, the ranges that are returned from a laser scan begin at the most negative value and they progress to the most positive value. How would I know that? Well, I can uh, click on uh, the laser scan definition here. So we can open this in a new tab. And this gives us information about what the data actually look like. So um, ranges data, uh, we don't get any values less than range min or greater than range max. Um, but we can see up here that for angle min, this is the start angle of the scan and angle max is the end angle of the scan. And the angle increment represents the distance between each measurement from the min to the max. That helps us if we'd like now to, to try to understand how we can do in Simulink uh, and in MATLAB specifically, how we can transform these points into something that looks like an image so that we can take advantage of some image processing tools that are out there. So let me just dive into some of the code here to show you what it looks like. In here, we can see uh, that we're taking in the min angle, the max angle, the increment angle, time increment, which I don't think we're using actually, um, and then range min, range mac, the number of ranges, and then the range array. The reason that we need this number of ranges is that this allows Simulink to know how much data to um, allocate while we're processing these data. So if we have received at least one value, um, then we're going to do everything that's on the inside here. And I've just converted many of these values that are passed in into doubles because uh, doubles makes it easier to do some kinds of processing. I know for a fact that uh, if we use the minimum angle uh, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 that that matches for this particular sensor. Um, and that since we have 180 points then we need to have pi divided by 179 be the angle increment. Um, and then uh, we really down here we're just doing some fairly simple math. So in order to come up with the angle array uh, we're just adding the angle increment um, to the minimum angle for the ith value. So this allows us to go for the for the first value it should be angle min. For value 2 it's 2 minus 1 which gives us 1 times the angle increment plus angle min gives us the angle at that range. Um, so this is fairly straightforward in order to do this conversion. Some of the code that's in this box is in here in order to make sure that, uh, that the code um, is fairly robust. And the next thing that we're going to do is transform from all of these angles and distances that come out into the Cartesian coordinate system. And this is going to allow us to see in terms of X and Y um, exactly, uh, exactly where the points are. So how do I know that X values align with forward points and Y values align uh, with left points in the positive direction? Well, I know this because this is the rule for most vehicles in ROS, that uh, in a local coordinate system you want X to be straight and you want angles to go positive using the right-hand rule with Z up in the air. So Y is therefore off to the left, um, and we can see that also in RViz, that positive X is in this direction, positive Y is in this direction. And so if my angle is positive over here, then the uh, cosine of this angle is going to give me x and the sine of this angle is going to give me the y value here. Okay, so um, with that in mind the next interesting thing is to discuss how we get turn these points, which are all now Cartesian points, into an image. And we do this in a fairly straightforward way. Uh, we take in um, an image which is in this case 1600 by 800 pixels. Uh, 1600 is how tall it is and 800 is how wide it is. And uh, we do this because uh, we know that our sensor is giving us 80 um, meters distance in any direction. So um, if we come back to Arbiz now and look kind of from the top, I'm going to scroll out here. So we can go up to 80 meters in any direction and therefore we need to come 80 meters out from the front of the car and we need to go 80 meters down as well as 80 meters up. So that gives us 160 meters from top to bottom 
and 80 meters from left to right. And I want this region here, which is a little hard to, to point out, but I want, uh, <laughs> I'm not, not very effective at doing that, but I want this region uh, from this point here down to this point here to represent the image that we're creating. So that means that uh, we're going to, in creating a 1600 by 800, first of all, we need to do something to the Y points. And we need to do that for a pretty good reason. Um, the reason why we need to do that, oops, is that the point Y equals zero in our coordinate system is right here at the front of the laser. So this represents in the cars, in the laser's coordinate system, where Y of zero is. But in an image, y of zero would be right here. It would be uh, near the top of all of the things that we could possibly see. So what we'll, what we'll have to do is do some coordinate transformation for the y values. And that coordinate transformation will achieve by subtracting all the y points throughout this from 80. So up here we have, for example, the y value would be 80. If we want a y value of 80 to be at the zeroth pixel, then we arrive at that by saying 80 minus whatever the y value is. Likewise here, 80 minus this y value gives us a new coordinate value of zero, uh, of, sorry, of 80. And then down at the bottom, it gives us a coordinate value of 160. So this will range the y in the image from zero up here to the maximum value at the bottom. And we'll also be multiplying each pixel by 10 in the y dimension that allows us to account for every 10 pixels represents one meter in the image and the rest of this code is fairly straightforward if you read the comments uh, we're getting the x out of the first column and the y out of the second column and we're now taking the that x and y value and creating um, a point near uh, the x and y point uh, to make sure that it doesn't flow over. So we need to make sure we don't go outside the bounds of the image here. So this index underscore X and index underscore Y tries to take X and Y and enlarge that by uh, a factor of 10 to make this individual point a large square. And that large square is going to represent the fact that we got a return at this X and Y position. We're then going to uh, do a little bit of arithmetic here uh, and then or this with the value 255. So by default, um, uh, 255 represents white. And uh, this is going to mean that we have a black background because everything's zero by default. And we're gonna make it white if we happen to find an image here, or a point here. Okay, so I think that's kind of enough looking through the code. Let's just run this and see what happens. Here we are. So if we look in our viz here, we can see some of the same points. Uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to make it a little bit more clear. So if we zoom out, we can see that the car is right here. And then we have some points that we can map directly into this image. So we have an outlier here and then a bunch of points that seem together we have this angle here, and then we have three lines. Uh, these lines, by the way, correspond to Jersey barriers in the actual neighborhood. And these two bits over here correspond to homes. So what we've been able to do here is to uh, generate an image in Simulink, that's what this is over here, from points that we're getting from Ross. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, you'd probably want to do it if you have some experience in signal processing by image processing. Uh, this allows you to treat uh, as, as a signal the image that you're acquiring from uh, ROS, and then you can take advantage of characterization through image processing rather than needing to do uh, low-level signal processing. Um, whether you want to do that or not, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to advise you, but I can say that this is one way to consider transforming data that comes from a sensor in ROS 
into a format that you might be more comfortable with. So uh, if you have more questions about this, please head on over to the forums on the CPS virtual org, and I look forward to hearing from you, and I hope this was useful.